it's not that Raphael Warnock has missed this. It's that he is intentionally not believing in it. Because Raphael Warnock, and, and this has been proven time and time again, if you, read his, if you read his words, you see the things that he says about America, the things that he says about religion, his religion is leftism. I've been saying this for years. Leftism is not a political ideology. It is a rival religion. It is an alternative to the Christian worldview. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. You know I had to do this. Like, if, if you saw this story out there, you knew there was no question in your mind, even though we've moved to the one show a week format and I have significantly less time, I was not going to let this one go. I can't. When you see a religiously charged story of Democrats being stupid and knowing nothing about religion, Caleb's got to jump on it. That's just the way that this thing works. Watching a leftist try to do religion is just hysterical. For a number of reasons. I mean, you could list a number, but it's it's kind of like watching a two-year-old trying to do algebra. Like, it's, it's kind of funny from the standpoint, and it, it can get sad. Or, or like watching somebody that doesn't have any legs try to, <laughs> you know, I don't know, bicycle or something like that, even though with, you know, prosthetics, they can actually do that now. Um, but the point is, like, it's just funny to watch them do something that they're so bad at. And it's kind of like how everybody likes the uh, the American Idol singers, the ones that are really bad. They watch them for the, the people that are good, too, but they also watch them for the ones that are really awful, and that's why they do the tryouts and, and show those on TV. This is kind of what that is. Whenever the left tries to make a point using religion to do it, they almost always slam face first into the concrete. But the thing that's even funnier about this one is that it comes from a guy who is supposed to be a minister, and this was his big selling point. And I'm talking, of course, about the senator from the great state of Georgia, Raphael Warnock, who is usually referred to as reverend, even though I don't call any human being that because that word is only used once in the Bible, and it is a name that is referred to, it's, it's a name referring to God by the psalmist David. Um, so I, I don't use that for anybody, but he is supposed to be somebody that is a minister, a preacher, someone who is supposed to be well-versed in the Word of God, and, and not just any preacher, one that we were told was from a predominantly, like a historically important, predominantly black congregation that Martin Luther King Jr. himself attended, and it was an important church to the people, especially black people, in the state of Georgia. And this was one of the big things that the me I remember the media coverage of this, talking about how Trump is a, a terrible person that doesn't live by the Gospels and is a heathen, and don't be wrong, there is some basis to that considering his life prior to politics, and, and he's not the nicest person in the world. But they tried to act as though that this is this is what a real Christian looks like. And they they kept driving that point home over and over and over and over again. And this tweet is a pretty good sum summary of the kind of Christian that Raphael Warnock actually is. And I, I just love this tweet. So this was right after Easter weekend. The meaning of Easter is more transcendent than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whether you are a Christian or not, through a commitment to helping others, we are able to save ourselves. It's difficult to be wrong that often in such a short amount of time. This guy only has 280 characters to slam face first into religious heresy, and he does it. It's incredible how they could do this. Now, if it were Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I'd still laugh. It's still funny, but I expect it from them because... That's what I've come to expect from them. They don't know anything about religion. They, they try to wheel it out every now and then when they think that religion actually teaches something that 
would be beneficial to their cause or might convince people to go along with their political narrative. And then they throw it back into the closet the second anybody mentions anything that might be inconvenient for them politically. Like they, they never want to talk Bible and say you're a bad person for talking about the Bible when it comes to things like, for example, gay marriage or transgenderism. They, they, no Bible allowed then. But then whenever it comes to something that they think doesn't mean it does, but they think religion is on their side when it comes to things like welfare. They say that, well, the Bible talks about taking care of the poor, so let's let's pull the Bible out now because it, right now it fits the political agenda. Raphael Warnock is kind of trying to do the same thing, even though he's making a more general statement, but ultimately... This thing is obviously theologically incorrect. I don't have to go into great detail about that. Anybody that's been a Christian for more than like two seconds knows that this is wrought with Christian heresy. First of all, you can't save yourself. I mean, he literally says through helping others, good works, we save ourselves. Um, have, have you read Galatians? <laughs> have you read the Gospels? Have you read Ephesians? Works-based salvation is not a thing. You can't work to save yourself. In fact, this is a, a predominant theme of the book of Hebrews. This is all throughout the New Testament, but it's especially put on display in Galatians and Hebrews. The whole point of it is saying, no, we couldn't save ourselves. If we could save ourselves, we didn't need a savior. The whole reason Jesus came is because we can't do that. I mean, it would be like, um, the lifeguard swimming out to wherever you are in the pool while you're drowning and be like, no, no, I'm good. And just swimming back to shore. Okay. Well then you didn't need the lifeguard. The lifeguard being there was completely pointless. There's no reason for that person to swim out to save you if you're ca perfectly capable of saving yourself. And so it, obviously it's theologically stupid. And th the other side of that, of course, is that, Easter is for people that are not Christian. The resurrection of Christ is for non No, that's not how that works. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Anybody that comes by a different way, anybody that tries to get into where the sheep are by any way other than me, he is a thief and a robber, and he will be cast out into utter darkness. I mean, you could quote scripture all day long talking about Christianity's exclusivity. And so he's wrong on that point. He's wrong on the, the one that we just talked about, about saving yourself through your works. And, and the fact that we need a savior is personified by the fact that we're incapable of saving ourselves and that we cannot work our way into heaven. And that's true of Christians or non-Christians. But a lot of people would probably look at this and do exactly what they would do with somebody like Nancy Pelosi, like AOC, like Joe Biden or other people that pretend to be religious when it suits them and then pretend not to be when it's not. I don't think that this is the same case, and it's partly because this guy is a minister. It is not humanly possible for somebody that has supposedly been trained in Scripture to have missed this. It's just not. Because it's such a basic fundamental thing to know about the faith that it's not possible for you to have missed it. You can misunderstand it, you can interpret it wrongly, but you can't miss it. You can try to wire work your way around it, but you can't not know about it. Not if you've been trained in this. I mean, that would be as basic as any principle you could come from any other ideology. It would be like saying, well, yeah, I mean, he's uh, been a, a lawyer for 15 years and you know went through law school, got a couple of law degrees, um, but he's never heard of the First Amendment. No, that, that's not how that works, at least not in Amer if, if you're an American lawyer. You, you can't do that. And so this is what is going on here. I, I don't think that uh, Raphael Warnock, it is even possible for him to have been trained in ministering without knowing that it is impossible to work yourself into salvation, especially considering how the scripture alludes to this over and over and over and over and over again. This isn't like just some obscure verse in the Minor Prophets. This is the fundamental foundation of why we have a Savior in the first place. And so here's what's actually going on. It's not that Raphael Warnock has missed this. It's that he is intentionally not believing in it. 
because Raphael Warnock, and, and this has been proven time and time again, if you read his, if you read his words, you see the things that he says about America, the things that he says about religion, his religion is leftism. I've been saying this for years. Leftism is not a political ideology. It is a rival religion. It is an alternative to the Christian worldview. You must change everything about your belief system in order to be able to look at a guy like Caitlyn Jenner and say, nope, that's a woman. Not just he appears to be a woman, not just he dresses like a woman. That is literally a woman. You can't get there if you have any semblance of objective morality or truth. And that's what leftism is. It demands that you give that up in order to succumb to and, and in order to be in line with that religion. It's a alternative worldview. It affects every aspect of your belief system. And with Raphael Warnock, this is no different. You see, the preaching of the gospel, which is the exclusivity of Jesus, means that a tenet of his real religion, leftism, was violated. Because one of the chief moral teachings of leftism is plurality. That everybody's okay, that everybody can be saved. It doesn't really matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter if you pray to God or Allah or one of the Hindu gods or the moon or whatever else you want to pray to. As long as you feel it really sincerely in your heart, then yeah, you can be saved. And again, that's it's about doing something. It's about feeling something in your heart and just generally being a good person. And by the way, if we were to extrapolate this from what Raphael Warnock actually meant, he probably means voting Democrat when he says helping people. Because, you know, leftists don't believe in individual charity. They believe in collective charity. But anyway, not going to go to that point because we don't really have to for this. The point is, when a moral teaching of Christianity, which is the exclusivity of Jesus, that he alone is God and you will worship no other gods other than him, came into conflict with, but, you know, what about Muslims and Hindus and, and everybody else and Jews that don't accept Christ as the Messiah you know, that, that are religiously Jewish and believe we're still under the Old Testament or atheist or everybody else. Well, what happens to those people? Well, in leftism, they, you know, their gods are just as good as Jesus and anybody else. And so the resurrection is really for everybody because none of this stuff matters. See, that's the value system of somebody on the left. And when Raphael Warnock's belief system of leftism came into conflict with a moral teaching of Christianity, leftism won out because that's his real religion. And this is ultimately goes back to the idea behind leftism in general. Because it is a rival religion, what is it? It's paganism. Paganism was inherently pluralistic. I actually somewhat alluded to this point in the interview I just did with Jeremy. Pagans didn't believe that the God of heaven was not really there. They didn't believe, oh, Baal is the one true God and God's not really. They believed that Baal was real and God was real and uh, Molech was real and all the other gods were real too. They just believed they were all out there and, and you could be very pluralistic in that way. When somebody came up and believed in a different god, you might believe that your god is better and that your god trumps their god, but you didn't believe that his god didn't exist and you didn't believe that he couldn't be saved by his god. That's how pagans thought. And leftism is the new paganism. A lot of people think a lot of this progressivism stuff and the socialism stuff is new and it's a, it's a nuanced, novel idea. No, it's the same thing that Satan's been teaching, uh, tempting people with forever. It's the idea that we can make God in our image. And that's exactly what Raphael Warnock believes because he wants to, you know, be pluralistic, which is what his church leftism preaches. And so he gave up because, again, in a tribalist idea, your God does trump their God, but their God still exists. He believes probably that Christ rose, and, and I assume that he believes that Easter is something that you should celebrate. And that is a secondary religion to him, just like many people in Athens. Their chief God was Athena, but they'd worship Zeus every now and then. They'd, they'd worship Hera every now and then. They'd worship Achilles, or sorry, not Achilles, <laughs> Apollo, or, or one of the other Greek gods. Uh, they weren't, you know, against worshiping other gods. They just, you know, liked Athena. That was their main god. And if Athena said something and the other gods said something else, whatever Athena said trumped that because that's their favorite god. Well, to Raphael Warnock, it's the same thing. Leftism is his favorite god, 
but he also does kind of believe in Jesus and, and the God of the Bible and whatever. And so it's just whenever they come in conflict, leftism is the one that wins out in his mind. These people are nothing but Old Testament pagans. They've got a, a shiny new coat of paint, and they may claim that they are atheistic, a lot of them. Obviously, Warnock doesn't, but they may claim that they are atheistic or secular or have moved past that. But the truth is, they're living in the same paganist system that we had back in Old Testament times. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, woke brigade?